Okay, we're now going to show you the peak fitting application in Graham's AI. Peak fitting is used to model complex peaks into a set of overlapping single peaks. And to do this, we're going to start with our infrared spectrum that we have loaded into Graham's AI. We can zoom in onto the set of peaks that we want to fit. And we can do this right in Graham's AI or in peak fitting itself. We're going to zoom in here on this region. As we can see, we have some complex peaks that likely have um, several single overlapping peaks. And to run peak fitting, we need to go to our Applications menu, Advanced Processing, and choose Peak Fitting. This brings us into the peak fitting um, user interface. As you can see, we've maintained the zoom that we had in Graham's AI. Initially, peak fitting shows our original spectrum, which we see here in red, and is bounded by two blue lines. And those blue lines show us the edge of the fit. We can move those lines by clicking on them and dragging them left or right to adjust the edges of our fitting region. We'll see a legend on top here. And this will show us our results when the fit has been completed. As you can see, the original trace is in red that we see here. We can also see the name of our original trace down here at the right. The program operations in peak fitting are, are controlled through our tab spot dialog in the peak fitting options window. Clicking on the different tabs will change the options that we're allowed to set. Our Peaks tab controls the peak fitting operations, such as selecting the region or adding and deleting peaks manually. As you can see, the region that we have set is right here. The Iterate tab is going to control our peak fitting calculations. It's grayed out until the first peak is added to our view. The Find tab lets us use an Auto Find feature to help us automatically find peaks in our um, spectral region. And the Options tab controls our save operation. This will let us save our results as well as saving parameters file in order to recreate a fit if we need to at a later time. On every tab section here, we see the same options at the bottom. We can print, auto scale our view, scale in the Y direction, copy the clipboard. Once we have peaks defined, we can also see our peak parameters in our statistics. At any point in time during the fit operation, we can access the Grams Online Help by clicking the Help button, which brings up the Help dialog related to the exact screen we're looking at. So let's get started in using the peak fitting application. Now we've already set our region using Graham's AI, but if we wanted to change this region, we can use the auto scale feature to auto scale the entire trace. Now we can click and drag a box and zoom inside to zoom in on a peak fitting region. As I mentioned previously, we can adjust the region by either moving the blue lines at the edges or typing values into the left and right boundaries. So to add peaks, we can simply right click in the spectral region. So if we right click, wherever I click my mouse, it's going to create a peak. Whenever I see little boxes, on both the top and the sides of the peak, that means I can click on those boxes and adjust the value with my mouse by clicking and dragging and moving that peak. And also click and drag on the sides and widen the peak. We can choose the baseline function to use for our fit. We offer many different options. We can choose to have no baseline, a simple offset baseline, linear, quadratic, and cubic. And those are calculated when the fit is performed. 
delete a peak, I can click here in the peak section, add to delete. And if I click that, if I right click on the peak, it confirms. And I can then delete the peak. We can auto find by clicking on the find tab. And this is where we choose our peak function. Um, the same function that was used when we manually add a peak as well. As you can see, we offer a full range of various peak line shapes. I'm going to select Gaussian for our example today. I can set the different parameters, the sensitivity, low, medium, or high. The maximum number of peaks, if I use zero, will auto find um, any number. And the full width of half height. Now, if I don't know the full width of half height to use for my peaks, I can choose estimate. And it brings up two lines in the middle here. They're purple. And I can use that to click and drag and change the value to estimate that full width at half height. And I can choose accept. And it puts the new value into my full width at half height box. I can set the number, the maximum number of peaks defined. I can look at my data here, and I can choose perhaps four or five or even six. For our example, I will choose five for now. And I'm going to click Find Now. So it found five peaks, and it's added those peaks to my view. If I'd like to start again, I can go back to Peaks and choose Clear, and go back to Find, and perhaps enter a different number. Find. And again, it found those same five peaks because of my full width at half height value. The full width at half height value is very important. If you choose it too high, you won't identify perhaps all the peaks that could be in your data. If you choose something lower, I'm just going to manually change that value and refined peaks. I'll clear what I already did. And as you can see, it, it finds slightly different peaks. The boundary areas that you choose are also important. I widen my area just a bit, leaving all my settings the same. It positions the peaks slightly differently. So to refine our peak positions here, we can choose the PK params button, which stands for peak parameters. And we can actually see the position of all the peaks that we have. As you can see, we have one small peak right here with almost a zero height. So we may want to refine that, um, perhaps in our fit as, as we go further along. Or we can manually edit any of these values. So we click on Edit. We can change the function of any peak. We can change the center x, the height, and the width to start with for our iterations. Because this is an iterative process, we specify a high and low limit for that, that value. So for example, for center x, if our center is at approximately 1130 wave numbers, the program will automatically change the value in the range that we set it. We can also choose to fix the value by clicking the Fix box, and that will maintain that value that you set. It's OK to, to accept the values that we've chosen. To perform the fit, we need to go to our Iterate tab. And on the Iteration control, we can choose to perform the iteration we click Run, it will iterate. Now, you'll notice here it's finding a value that's continuously hitting its limits, which means that we didn't start with a very good value. And that's that, that peak that was way down here before. And when I hit this, I usually tend to hit Cancel, because it tells me that I didn't do a very good job of setting my peak parameters. So we're going to go back here, clear up, and start over again. And in my case, I'm going to just try to add these myself rather than the 
auto find feature, just to show how we add peaks. So we're going to right click, left click, excuse me, and make sure I click on add. One, two, three, four. I'm going to start with five peaks because that's what it identified for us. So we're going to start with those five. I'm going to place them in ballpark estimates for where they are. I'll go to my iterate tab and run. And as you can see, it goes through and finds a mathematical solution that will fit those peaks right to my data. We can see on the top, we can see our original trace in red. The fitted trace is the dark blue line, and the peaks that we've identified are green. The active peak, so peak that's, that's currently selected here if we were to modify things, is highlighted in a lighter blue color. And the baseline is at the bottom in maroon. So we set up a linear baseline and Gaussian peaks with five different peaks. And we can see it's done a fairly good job of fitting that data. To view our results, once the iteration has been completed, we can click on statistics. And this tells us some information about how the fit was performed. It shows us the region that we're fitting, the number of equations, the number of equations is always equal to the number of peaks plus one, because that extra one is the baseline. And it gives us some statistics related to our fit. Um, it did find a local minimum, so it found a solution mathematically to our fit. It gives us the R squared value for the fit, as well as some other parameters related to the goodness of the fit. If we go to the Options tab, we can choose to save some of our output from our fit. So if we click Save, we can choose to save various files. We can save the result trace, which is that fitted trace in the, in the dark blue that we saw. The peaks to a multi-file will save each peak as a separate subfile in a grams multi-file, so as well as the baseline. So you end up with a multi-file, in our case, for this fit, with six separate subfiles. So we can maintain each peak separately. Our peaks to a CSV file, that allows us to save the peak information to a CSV so we can open it in perhaps Excel or other program. And a peaks report, which saves a report for us to view how the fit proceeded. We click the Browse button next to any of these. We can choose to save this data. And we can even create a folder. All this peak fitting. That we can save our data. I can give it any name I like. I will call this one result. I can do the same for every option in our uh, output options dialog. Let's turn our own name. Call this report. And if we click save, it's now saved our results. We can also choose what's add more traces to our display here. Right now we see the source, the fitted trace, and the peaks. We can also show our residual. And the residual is what's left over after the fit. So you'll see that in a light purple here at the bottom. And that's just the difference between the fitted trace and the original. We can also show the second derivative as well. 